that intro wasn't gonna work. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is John. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I'll be posting content about my home climbing wall, videos of me training and setting, and eventually videos of outdoor and indoor bouldering. So I've been climbing for a little over a year now, mostly uh, indoor bouldering, which looks something like this. And I got a bunch of videos. Yes. Let's go! Come on, come on! I ventured into a little outdoor bouldering, which mostly looks like this. But sometimes it looks like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could count on my fingers the times I've top roped. Uh, and that's about it for rope climbing. So I wanted to talk about three things in this video. Oh, there are four things. So there's gonna be four parts to this video. The first part is like a brief overview and specs of the wall. Second part is before you start your wall, what are things you might wanna keep in consideration? Number three is now that I've finished my wall, what I know now or like what I would do differently. And the last part is the sort of in-depth, detailed, nitty gritty of like, how I made the wall, what materials, uh, how much did it cost. So to start off, my wall is a 30 degree, yeah. 30 degree inclined wall. It is uh, 12 feet high and eight feet wide. 30 degrees ends up being, I, I think, a perfect angle for training. You don't feel like too pumped out after a long session, but it's also, you can put like some bad holds on there and not just fall off right away. Other things about the wall, it's, three standard sheets of uh, three quarter inch um, plywood. There's a standard framing system holding up the plywood, which is 16 inch on center. On each side supporting the wall are two diagonal members also at 30 degrees. I guess it's an equilateral triangle. Yeah, um, I think that's good for like forces and stuff if you like are good at physics, I guess. Moving on to point number two. What was point number two? Oh yeah, things you might want to know before building your wall. The obvious one is, there are two obvious ones. Can you afford it? Which I just barely did. Can you build it? Do you or do, does someone you know have the expertise to be making something that you're gonna climb on and sort of like trust your safety to? Other things you might want to like t take, in take into consideration where you're going to build it. Is it indoors or is it outdoors? What angle uh, you want, you know, what height you want or what height you can build at. Do you have the hardware? I didn't have any hardware, so I had to go out and buy, besides the wood and materials, I had to go buy holds where I made my own holds. I had to buy T-nuts. Um, I had to buy bolts. I had to buy drill bits because T-nuts take a drill bit that is not really standard but we'll get into that. Oh, it's an investment. So even if you really are struggling to climb or even if your gyms are open and you think you might want a wall, if you don't think you're gonna use it that often and you're sort of building it cause it's sort of like in right now, uh, maybe you shouldn't because there's still a lot of maintenance to it. I feel like after you build it, especially if you're building it outside. Okay, so the third point, which I think is one of the most important points, is what I know now after I built the climbing wall. I've seen a lot of videos where people talk about this and a lot of things I'm reiterating, but some things are just my personal experience. Make sure you're buying the proper hardware and you're not cheaping out on materials. If it's outside, make sure your wood is tr pressure treated. It means it can stand up to like humidity and moisture and rain. This is sort of like, a lot for outdoor walls because that's what I built, but you wanna make sure your T-nuts are stainless steel. Even if that's more money, it uh, adds a lot more longevity to your wall. I didn't buy the stainless steel ones. I just have like the black standard ones. I can already see some of them because it's so humid have like a tiny bit of rust where they're exposed. And uh, that's just something you're gonna to have to live with. Another thing that I know is holds are really expensive. If you're lucky enough to have your own, or maybe work at a climbing gym, that's great. If you don't, try to find 
different ways to procure these holds. So what I did was I like scoured the internet and I found a company that uh, made holds for like elementary and middle schools and they sold like a used box per pound. Um, and I'll, I'll have a video on that um, sort of the holds I got and if I think that's a, a good investment in, a, in the future. I think the last thing which is super important if you have an outdoor wall is um, obviously like a tarp or a closure system. So I bought two tarps. One that covers sort of the back side of the wall where all the T-nuts are is uh, 12 by 16. And I have a smaller tarp that sort of just covers sort of the face, the climbing face, so the holds and uh, everything else don't get that wet. So the last part of this video is going to be the detailed um, like step-by-step -step what I bought, how I, how I made the wall. And I'm going to sort of take you through um, looking at the actual wall that it's done, but also I have a 3D model that I made um, on my computer and we'll be looking at that a lot so it's much easier to sort of understand where things are, um, how they were constructed and everything else you might have uh, questions about for your climbing wall. Okay, here we are. We're looking at the 3D model of the climbing wall, which I made in addition to doing research, watching videos, and sketching. This model is pretty much accurate as it has the bolts and the wood and the plywood, even all the T-nut holds. In the back, we can see the framing system with the 12 feet studs. Here we see the connection of the wall to the ground. And here we see the connection of the wall to the support members. So as this video plays, I'll be adding to a materials list in the right hand corner so you can figure out exactly what I was using and how many. Now if we flip this over, we can take a look at the framing system, which is a combination of 2x6s and 2x4s. And those are 16 inch on center, which basically means they're 16 inches apart. Now when we started, we laid out the 2x4s and we had to shorten them a tiny bit because they're actually sandwiched in between the top and bottom member. The plywood sheets are put on top. Now these are all screwed together with exterior deck screws. Two and a half inches is a good length and they're spaced around six to eight inches apart, making sure to get the edges of the plywood. The next step was getting the two by sixes around the perimeter and in the center. It was a bit harder because we had to lift up what was already completed of the wall. Another thing to note is you want to use three inch exterior screws to fasten your framing system to each other. Now we can just stick a quick pan around, and this is the completed wall. I sanded and added some paint, but it's more or less done. So the last part of the wall is adding the feet, or what contacts the ground. And I had some scrap 2x6, and those were cut at a 60 degree angle. So when they rested on the ground, it made the 30 degree incline for the wall. Now it's important that these are held together with half inch bolts, because this is taking the entire weight of the wall and transferring it into the ground. Next we built the two supports on either side of the wall. Now this was started with the 2 by 4 by 10 and then by cutting a 60 degree angle in the diagonal members you can approximate or I used a 30 60 90 triangle to find the correct angle of the two diagonal members. This 2 by 4 by 10 is actually split so one is the diagonal member and the other is this horizontal. And again, these are all fastened in with bolts. These bolts are a little smaller, 3 8 So in order to better support the wall, instead of all the load being transferred to the bolts, we added a shelf, which is just another scrap piece of 2x6, and screwed and bolted that in. So most of the downward weight hits that shelf, but is also distributed through the bolts that tie them all together. Now this is one of the supports, and we just make the mirror image of this. And you can see all the material and bolts are just doubled. So when it came to putting it together, it was actually quite easy. We were able to rest the two supports on some neighboring trees, and that allowed us to walk the wall straight up to my house, tilt it backwards. Once it was at the right angle, the wall just dropped onto the shelves and it basically supported itself. The last step was to add the final screws and bolts that were actually tying the whole thing together. So we added a half inch bolt connecting the 2x6 to the wall. 
and on the smaller member, a 3 8 bolt. Now I forgot to show it in the video, but there's another 3 8 bolt connecting the base of the wall to the feet. Finally, for some extra support, we added two smaller shelves out of scrap 2x4 on the smaller diagonal members. And of course, all the bolts and screws are the same for the other side. There's the final shelf. And to keep the supports from moving, a final 2x4x10 was screwed into the front. And here we have it. The final materials I'm adding to the list are the cost of the holds I bought and the tarps. All right, and there it is, the completed climbing wall. I think if you add up the material cost, it was around $600, probably a little more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you want to see more content about the home wall, please hit that subscribe button.